Good evening, my name is Domenico Minotti and I am delighted to be able to kick off our Dante Alighieri Society program here with a presentation on Italian automobiles. <coughs> In the 19th century, many people were tinkering around trying to invent the internal combustion engines that would work. Um, in every country, um, we think of Daimler and Benz in Germany, but this presentation is going to be on the Italian version. So we start off with the uh, Italian Air Force showing the colors of the Italian flag and the Lamborghini Huracan also with the Italian colors. And we'll see this car a little later in our program. <clears throat> so we start with Enrico Zeno Bernardi, who in 1882 produced a gasoline engine he used it first on his daughter's sewing machine, then his son's tricycle, and eventually a motorized tricycle, which you see here. That part, uh, that uh, tricycle or motorized vehicle participated in the Turin Austria Alessandro Torino car race and uh, won the 2000 lira purse after going 119 miles in nine hours and 47 minutes at an average speed of about 12 miles an hour, despite a tire puncture and a subsequent broken gear shift. One family that we need to mention is the Cerano brothers, who in 1899 um, wanted to build cars uh, and started off building bicycles um, under the name of Willys, using an English name because they thought that would be more popular than the Italian name. The um, profound, the, uh, the founder of the company was the oldest brother who was an apprentice in his father's watchmaking uh, business, but he decided he didn't want to do that for a living. So off he went and uh, built the first car. And um, unfortunately, they ran into uh, financial difficulties and approached some wealthy Italian industrialists um, who took over their patents, their models, the car itself, and uh, helped them out. Well, the person that they, that they approached was Giovanni Agnelli, who was the founder of Fiat. So the car that Fiat first built, the Fiat for horsepower, the first ever Fiat, was actually the car that the, well, that the Ciarano brothers had made. However, they went on to start other car companies. The, the brothers Giovanni Battista, Giovanni Ernesto Matteo, all of these had their own logos and all of these Brit built cars in the early 1900s, many companies uh, that you see here. They were a part of a number of early manufacturers. And I listed here the ones that were active at the end of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century in red. And I want to call special attention to the Zust, which is a company that uh, produced cars from 1905 to 1918. They produced a car which they entered into the uh, New York to Paris world uh, race, um, which the map of which is seen here. And this is the car they entered with the Italian colors that you see. Well, they drove across the United States to San Francisco, barged up to Seattle and also to Alaska, then across the Pacific Ocean to Japan, across Japan, barged across the Japan, Japan Sea, and then across through Asia and ended up in Paris. Now, this is in 1908. You can imagine that there were really no roads to speak of, but there were cattle trails and farm trails of all sorts. Uh, nonetheless, the uh, Zust arrived in, uh, in Paris on July 30th, 1908, after having gone 10,377 miles. One of their drivers was an Antonio Scatfoglio, who was a reporter for Il Maltino newspaper, and he wrote a book entitled Il Giro del Mondo, The Trip Around the World in Automobile. So manufacturers that are currently uh, involved in producing cars are all of these that are listed, uh, and there's the dates of their cars, but we're not gonna talk about all of them. We're gonna limit ourselves to just a few, and we're gonna limit ourselves to the current major manufacturers. And again, I highlighted in red, the ones that were around from the very early days, Alfa Romeo, 1910, Fiat in 1899, Lancia 
1906 and Maserati in 1914. And these are the logos and uh, you should try to keep these in mind because later on there will be a short quiz to see if you can identify the car company with the logo. The first one we're going to talk about is Alfa Romeo. And the Alfa stands for Anonima Lombarda de Fabrica Automobile. Anonima were, represented the anonymous investors, which was legal to, uh, to do at the time. And the Romeo is the, the family name of Nicola Romeo, who was the founder of the company. They took as their logo a red cross and a kind of a snake serpent thing here. And the cross is the cross of St. Ambrose, who is the Archbishop of Milan. And this is part of the uh, flag of Milan. And then the serpent is part of the Visconti family shield. The Visconti family being a very important Milanese family at the time. It was founded in 1910 in Milan. It was known for sport oriented vehicles and has been involved in car racing since 1911. As many other companies, it produced military hardware for the Italian and Allied war efforts in World War I. They produced the first racing car in 1913 and won the inaugural World Championship for Grand Prix cars in 1925. Enzo Ferrari was part of Alfa Romeo and he founded the Scuderia Ferrari, the stable of Ferrari racing team as part of Alfa Romeo in 1929 before becoming independent in 1939. Alpha had the most wins of any mark in the world and was sold to the Fiat Group in 1986. So in 1911, the um, Alfa Romeo Tadga Florio uh, race, uh, which is here uh, noted in Sicily, and Palermo's up here to the left. And there are three circuits, uh, the, the small one, the medium sized one, and the grand circuit. And the 24 HP made by Alfa Romeo participated in its racing debut in the Tadga Florio. Later in the 50s, they produced a first production car without, with a, without a separate chassis and the first Alfa Romeo with a left-hand drive. Um, and during the 60s, they also produced uh, production-based cars such as the racing car, the Tipo 33. And the uh, Italian government had a partial interest in the, in the company and tried to set up a factory in the south of Italy to ensure, encourage the economy of the south. And they did so in Campania, the Naples re re region. Unfortunately, this happened after the 1968 protests in France, uh, labor protests, and Italy's hot autumn, which were also work strikes. And they set up the factory in Campania but unfortunately, employees were mostly farmers and laborers. They were not trained for factory work. The factory did not do well. Absenteeism, absenteeism ran out of 17% through the 1970s, and the factory was eventually uh, stopped. The factory was eventually terminated. But here's some more of their pretty cars, 1971 the Veloce, the Spider, which is one of the more famous brands that they made in 1986 and some current ones, the Stelvio in 2020 and the Giulia in 2021. They eventually merged with their rival Lancia and became part of Fiat's Alfa Lancia segment in 1986. Alfa Romeo had, had introduced many technological invention, uh, the double overhead cam, electronic fuel injection systems, all wheel disc brakes, alloy brakes, uh, and then using computer uh, uh, design process um, starting um, in the, in the, in the uh, late 80s and 90s. And they actually uh, was the first one to produce a, a car with electrical brakes in 2016. The second company that we're gonna talk about is Lamborghini, um, who were based outside of Bologna. Ferruccio Lamborghini was an Italian manufacturer magnate who produced mostly tractors starting in the 1940s but he's uh, famous for using a rear mid-engine rear wheel drive starting in 1963. This company uh, grew very rapidly during the first decade. The sales plunged in 1973 after the financial downtown and oil crisis. The ownership changed three times after, this, after 1973 
including a bankruptcy in 1978. And the company is now owned by the Volkswagen Group through its subsidiary Audi. Now, Lamborghini used as his logo this bull. And the two reasons for that, he was born under the sign of Taurus, the bull, and Lamborghini really loved bullfighting and was a, a aficionado of going to many bullfights in his day. So he had two Ferraris uh, for his own use and loved working with them, but uh, decried the fact that their clutches were not very strong. And so he used a clutch from his own tractors to substitute for the clutch of the Ferrari, which made it work better. And then he had the nerve to approach uh, Enzo Ferrari, whose picture is here, and here's Ferruccio, to complain about the clutch. And the real story behind the Lamborghini Ferrari feud is given by Valentini Palboni, who was a test driver who worked directly for Ferruccio. And so uh, Ferruccio goes to, up to Enzo Ferrari in the 1960s and he says, you know, your car uh, is wonderful, but you know, you've got to use a stronger clutch because the clutch isn't strong enough for these powerful sports cars. Ferrari, of course, took umbrage at that and said, what are you talking about? My cars are fine. You just don't know how to drive them. You're a farmer, for God's sakes. You're a tractor maker. What do you know about, about sports cars? You know, the problem is not the clutch. The problem is you. Lamborghini, in turn, got incensed about that and says, oh, yes, dear engineer, I am a farmer, but I know how to build a car and how a car should be. And so I will build my own car, and you can bet that it will be driven, it will be built and, and able to be driven the way a car should be built. And within a year, he had started the Lamborghini factory for car making, 1963. And here are some samples of Lamborghini's cars in 1965. 67, the Miuria, and then 2001, the Diablo, which at the time sold for about $700,000. But remember, he also produced tractors, and here's a sample of his tractor for $94,000. Then the Uracan, which is the, the picture of the car that we started off with, which was bought by police uh, uh, companies in many uh, states, in many, in many countries, selling for about $200,000. He also produced a 12-cylinder yacht engine and built a yacht um, called the Technobar, which sold for about $3 million. And only 63 of these were made. And in 2021, he produced the Sion, um, and only 63 of those were made. And the 63, of course, representing the year in which he started his company. So here's the more recent version. Here's the Lamborghini Aventador. Um, 759 horsepower with a, a, a MSRP of $517,000. But if you can't afford that, you might settle for a more modest version of the Urus SUV, which retails for about $200,000. The next company we're going to talk about is Maserati, and they use as their logo the Trident, which was the symbol of, of Bologna and represented by the Fontana del Nettuno, here, the statue in Bologna. So they took the trident and used the Italian colors as their logo. The Maserati brothers were five in all. They set up a workshop in Bologna in 1914. They had all worked for another car company, uh, Viato, which suspended the production of race cars in 1926. Alfieri, the oldest brother, took his design, created the first Maserati Tipo 26, which won the Tadga Florio in 1926. Maserati is known for back-to-back -back wins in 1939 and 1940 in the Indianapolis 500, making Maserati the only any Italian manufacturer ever to do so. And here's the Tipo 26 photographed on the roof of the Fiat Lingotto factory in Torino with the Alps in the background. And again, the race here in Sicily that we pointed out before. Now, we need to talk about the Guidi Solo tragedy. Um, that happened in, in, in uh, uh, 2017 uh, as part of the 1,000-mile thousand, uh, thousand race. A stretch of that race runs between, um, let's see if I get this straight, Guidizolo and um, where is it? 
Chetlongo, here we go. And it's a long stretch there. Um, and what happened is in the race at one point, the Ferrari driver um, blew a tire, went off the racetrack into the ditch, lost control of the car, plowed into a group of spectators at 160 miles per hour, killing uh, the driver, the co-driver, and uh, 10 other people, including uh, children. And Maserati decided they would no longer participate in car racing. And here's a memorial to um, acknowledge the race car tragedy at that time. But here are some of the cars that they built. The Gran Turismo, um, the Levante, uh, which is a midsize SUV um, selling for a measly $74,000. And in, in 1989, Chrysler under Lee Iacocca had the wonderful idea of putting a Maserati engine into a LeBaron um, um, chassis uh, and making a Chrysler TC. They thought that with the design, uh, European design, that they would attract a larger uh, uh, crowd to, to buy this car. But unfortunately, it wasn't very successful. Uh, there were very few colors available. There was very few of the European design that was included. And it was much more expensive than their regular LeBaron, uh, Chrysler LeBaron. And it wasn't very popular and failed. So in um, 2014, Maserati exhibited the Ghibli, uh, which is a car designed by them. And they had a special uh, car, the Ghibli Senya edition, which had a car upholstered in Poltrona, frow leather, a special kind of uh, soft leather, a silk fabric for the, uh, the upholstery, uh, triple layer Azuto Astro paint, and 20 inch wheels. Um, and this was the uh, Maserati Ghibli at that time. And then the Quattro Porte, a four door sedan, was uh, produced in 1963. Here are some of their more recent versions. The 2001 Maserati Ghibli, again, uh, at $95,000, but you can save $10,000 if you buy it off the internet. And the 2021 Maserati Levant, again, um, at $111,000, but with the $10,000 saving if you buy it off the internet. Now, Lancia is another company, and here's, I love this picture of Vincenzo Lancia. He seems like a, such a happy guy having a good time driving his car. He was a race car driver for Fiat uh, and the Cerdano fa factory, but he thought that he could make a better car because he knew about the vehicle mechanics. So he broke away from the Cerdano's factory in 1906 to pursue an automobile that was completely designed by him and persuaded Claudio Fogolin, a fellow Fiat test driver, to join his ranks. They both put together 50,000 50, lira each and opened their shop in 1906. The first car was the Tipo 51, later called the Alpha from 1907 to 1908. And Lancia had, has become a brand name known for its elegance of their experience, innovative interior designs, and their models were named after the Greek alphabet or for the many roads that led to Rome. So here's the Alpha, 1907-1908. Lancia is renowned for their innovations, uh, the Theta in 1913, was the first European production car to feature a complete electrical system. The Lambda in 1922 had a unibody chassis, the Ardea, a five-speed gearbox, gearbox, the Aurelia, a V6 engine, after earlier experiments with the V8 and V12, first to produce a V4 engine, first to produce a car with independent suspension and stand in standard radial tires. And despite not competing in the championships directly, they still hold the, the, the uh, more manufacturers' championships than any other brand because so many of the racing cars use their features. They went to Fiat in 1969 and eventually to Stellantis, which we'll talk about later. So here's the Lancia Aurelia in 1951, which was a wonderful uh, uh, luxury uh, car uh, that featured in many Italian movies. Uh, because of its because of its elegance and style, and Lancia Epsilon in 2011 
um, was produced and became very popular in Great Britain and Ireland, um, where, um, uh, but now it's only, only available in Italy and still produced. It's the one car that's still being produced under the Lancia name. Here's the Lancia Delta, which they uh, um, worked with Saab uh, in Sweden and produced as the Saab 600 in the 1980s. Here's the Lancia Hyena two-door Hyena two-door coupe, which was built on a, a, a on a Fiat uh, body, but the Fiat would not allow them to use the chassis. So what the uh, Lancia people did is went to many dealers, bought the car from from the dealers, took it completely apart, rebuilt it to their standard, and produced this coupe in 1992. We have to say a name about Pagani founded in 1992 by an Argentinian, Horacio Pagani, and, and based uh, in a, in, uh, near Modena, Italy. They have a very elegant, simple uh, logo uh, with uh, Horacio's name prominently displayed. He, uh, Horacio Pagani uh, managed Lamborghini's composites department, uh, but then went off on his own to, use, uh, to found his own composite research in 1988, and also a design uh, company in 1991. He produced the Zonda C12, first presented at the 1999 Geneva Motor Show. And in 2005, Pagani announced that it planned to triple its production and to enter the US market in 2007. Well, here is the Zonda uh, produced in 1988, um, I'm sorry, um, in 1999. And uh, a total of 140 cars uh, had been built a two-door coupe and a roadster a, along with the Baqueta. The construction is mainly of carbon fiber. The Zonda was named for the Zonda wind, a regional term for a hot air current above Argentina, and the price was a million four hundred thousand dollars. Not to be uh, not to be satisfied with that, with that, Pagani has confirmed the pricing of what is now the world's most expensive new car, a Zonda HP Baqueta. Note the HP standing for Oriasu Pagani and the Barqueta completely handmade, selling for uh, $23.65 million. Only three of these are being produced. Two of them already sold to other uh, industrialists, rich industrialists. And the third one, uh, the Pagani res reserved for himself to give himself as a 60th birthday present. We come to Ferrari. Um, based in Maranello, again near Modena, founded, remember, by Enzo Ferrari, the Scuderia Ferrari, Scuderia meaning stable. Um, and Ferrari first worked uh, for Alfa Romeo, and then um, the Alfa Romeo withdrew its racing team. Scuderia Ferrari took it over, and then in 1938, even that was disbanded. 1939, Ferrari left Alfa Romeo, had a four-year non-compete clause, but produced in secret a Tipo 8815 car in 1940. In 1947, the Scuderia Ferrari was reborn, producing the 125S, the first Ferrari, Ferrari badge car, but only two were made. In 1969, Fiat acquired 50% of Ferrari and later 90% by 1988. So let's think a moment for about their logo. So their logo is based on the prancing horse. And that comes from um, a, a different source. And I think I have a slide about that. Yeah. So Francesco Baracca was a pilot in World War I who died in 1918. And he used the prancing horse as a logo for his plane. Um, after he died, Enzo Ferrari met his parents and chatted with them. And the mother of Francesco Baracco says, Ferrari, you should use my son's prancing horse as your logo. It will bring you good luck. And so he did. And it's undergone various versions, but a uh, yellow background for the color of Modena, the Italian flag colors, the Ferrari name, later also symbolized just with the SF and the prancing horse. So Ferrari is known for its racing, especially Formula One, it's got the oldest and most successful racing team with 16 constructor championship, 15 drivers championship. When you think Ferrari, you're saying speed, luxury, and wealth. 
And in 2014, it was rated the world's most powerful brand. In June 2018, a 1963 Ferrari, a 250 GTO, of which 36 had been made, was sold at auction to, for $70 million to David McNeil, who's the CEO, CEO of WeatherTech Floor Mats. And I had a WeatherTech Floor Mat in my SUV, and I'm sure there are people watching this presentation who use the WeatherTech Floor Mats in their cars. In 2021, Ferrari is still the 10th largest car manufacturer. And here's some samples of their, of their cars. And here's a picture of that 1963 GTO. And here's some more uh, pictures of, there's what, this is their very first car, only two were built. And here's some samples, pictures of their uh, racing cars. The 1949 Touring Baqueta selling for $10, $10 million, very beautiful car. Um, a car with a design by Pinin Farina, one of the famous Italian uh, car designers. The 2021 Ferrari uh, Spider, which is a, a plug-in hybrid vehicle selling for 274 and the Puro Sangre, Puro Pure Blood or Thorough Blood selling for $300,000 in 2022. Now we come back to Fiat. So as we remember, uh, Fiat began in 1899-1900 when Giovanni Agnelli bought out the Cerrano, um, uh plans and their car and started producing it under Fiat. Um, and these are all the logos from Fiat up to the present time, with the current logo being this one. The first factory was quite small, employing only 150 people. But they also built a factory in the United States in 1908 in Poughkeepsie, uh, which was really surprising to me. Um, I, uh, came, I grew up in a town called Terrytown, which is about 50 miles south of Poughkeepsie in the Hudson Valley. So let's take a look at some of the Fiat cars. Fiat standing for Fabrica Italiana di Automobilo Torini, Torino. Um, it was the first Fiat plant, um, made 24 cars with 35 staff in 1903. They made 135 cars in the first truck. 1906, they went public on the Milan Stock Exchange. 1908, they exported their car to the US. They built their first aircraft engine. They built taxis, which became very popular. The cost of a Fiat in the United States was initially $4,000 compared to $825 for a Ford Model T and rose up to $6,400 in 1918 compared to $525 for the, for the Ford Model T. So much more expensive, but certainly a luxury vehicle that was sought out by people who could afford it. In 1910, it was the largest automotive company in Italy and a new plant was built in Poughkeepsie, New York. World War I, they built aircraft, engines, machine guns, trucks, and ambulances, and their first tractor. In 1920, Fiat had a market share in Italy of 80%, and Agnelli led the company until his death, until his death in 1945. They built their factory in Torino, the Lingotto factory here, and on the roof, they built a racetrack. And inside, they had a helical ramp, such as we see in many car, uh, garages these days, an internal helix, e helix, which went to the roof so they could drive their cars up to the roof and test them out on the racetrack. Fiat Automobile was the largest manufacturer in Italy and in Europe for over 20 years, third in the world for many years after General Motors and Ford until the car industry crisis in the late 1980s. They developed new technology, building railway engines, military vehicles, aircraft and weapons, and we'll show you some samples of some of that. So in, the, in World War I, they built a water-cooled machine gun, which was used by the Allies, our side, okay? They also made a fighter aircraft like the CR-32, CR-42, uh, as well as tanks, but these were obsolete compared to their German and Soviet counterparts. The best Fiat aircraft was the G-55 fighter, which they produced for the Axis, the other side in the war, but it arrived too late and, uh, and too limited numbers to help the Germans. Now in 1945, Benito Mussolini was overthrown. The National Liberation Committee removed the Agnelli family from leadership roles in Fiat because of the family's ties to Mussolini's government. And the Agnelli family were not returned to power until 1963 when Giovanni's grandson, Johnny, took over as general manager 
until 1966, and later as chairman until 1996. The European Car of the Year Award has been awarded 12 times to the Fiat Group over the last 40 years, more than any other manufacturer. And nine of the awards were won by the Fiat automobiles themselves. And here you can see the Fiat 124, 1967, and the Fiat 500, very popular car. The Punto and the Panda, also popular cars. We'll see some of those in subsequent slides. Remember that the first Fiat uh, was the Fiat four horsepower, it started as a three and a half horsepower, but that was based on the Chiarano design, only 24 vehicles were made. The Fiat 127 hatchback produced in 1971, following the lead of Renault who introduced the hatchback in France. And then the Ritmo family car in 1978, the Uno Super Mini in 1983, and the Tipo family hatchback in 1988. The Italian industry uh, became third in Europe and fifth in the world with annual output near 2 million in the 1990s. But in 2011, it fell below 800,000 for the first time and is now sixth place in Europe and 19th place in the world. Here's one of the early Fiat 500s in 1974, the Fiat Punto in 1993, and the multiple multi-purpose vehicle in 1998. Samples of the Punto, the 500X, uh, the Fiat 500 in 2011, the Panda, their newest electric version selling in 2022 for under $30,000, and the Fiat Uno produced in Brazil. Now here's a Fiat 124 Sports Spider, and I know this car because I own one. And uh, as, as with many Fiats in the day, uh, it had uh, recurring problems. And Fiat um, in those days uh, stood for fix it again, Tony, or fix it again tomorrow. But in view of the history of Fiat and their uh, subsequent takeover of many other cars and many other car companies, I, I think it stands for find innovative automobiles and take them over, which of course is what they've done. The Fiat 500 electric uh, is coming out this year. There are three unique cars that uh, produced with uh, special designs by Italian designers, Bulgari, Armani, and Cartel. And the car is priced at about 43,000 US dollars and can already be pre-ordered in some markets. Celantis is a Dutch domicile multinational automotive manufacturing corporation formed this year as a merger between Italian conglomerate Fiat Chrysler and the French PSA Group. Their headquarters in Amsterdam and the Netherlands. It's the sixth largest automaker worldwide. It's listed on the stock exchanges of Milan, Paris, and New York. And their principal activity is the design, development, manufacture, and sale of automobiles bearing the Abarth, Alfa Romeo, Fiat, Fiat Professional, Launch, and Maserati. So you can see how first Fiat took over these companies and then Stellantis took them over. Stellantis has 300,000 employees, is a, is, 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 has a presence in 130 countries with manufacturing facilities in 30 countries. Now, if you want to get any of these Italian cars, you can get the Lamborghini in Bellevue, a Fiat in Tacoma. But here in Seattle, you can pick up your own Alfa Romeo or your own Ferrari. Why is Italy at the forefront of design in so many areas? Well, if you think about interior design, you have some famous names, um, including Ponti, um, Polini, names that I recognize, and Minotti. No relation to my family that I know of but they do have a showroom here in Seattle. Industrial design with a, uh, the lamp made by Bev Nocchi, the espresso mocha pot by Violetti and the Olivetti typewriter, and bicycles and gear, the, the only names that I recognize are Campagnolo and Pinarelli, but I know there are bicyclists in, uh, in the audience and people wa watching this presentation who will recognize these other names. And of course, in auto the automobile, um, Universe, Alfa Romeo, the Ferrari Spider, Supercars, the Fiat 500, the Vespa and Lambretta motor scooters, and design firms such as Pinin Farano, Farina, who did a lot of design for, uh, for um, uh, what's what, Volkswagen, Segato, Ito Design, and Bertone. And then, of course, in fashion, 
a long list of names in fashion. So why is Italy at the forefront of design in so many areas? Well, if you ask the architect Luigi Caccia Dominioni, he claims, well, quite simply, we are the very best. We have more imagination, more culture, and are better mediators between the past and the future. The past being the Renaissance, which of course started in Italy, and the future being a uh, current day. So now we come to the quiz part. So you can do this on your own. You can stop the presentation here and see if you can match the name of the company with the logos that are shown here. In addition, uh, you can find the, the Festa quiz 2021, which is based on uh, uh, Italian automobiles at the uh, Dante Alighieri website. And the answers are at the bottom of it. So you should be able to answer most of the questions from the presentation that you have witnessed here. And so that's the end of this presentation. And I wish you all tanti cari auguri, and we'll be happy to take any questions and comments. Thank you very much.